We are on the last episode of our four part series. And today I wanna to talk about organization, more specifically partials. Partials are gonna allow us to take pieces of our CSS and put them into their own style sheets so that we don't have to scroll endlessly through a global style sheet at the end of our build in order to change a button styling. We just go to our buttons partial and find all of our styling there. Now there are some differences between a partial and a style sheet. So I want to show you that right now and show you how a partial can help your workflow. All right, so imagine this, you've finished your website and you've used SAS throughout your entire website. You've put everything into one style sheet and now you need to find the styles for your buttons. Well, you have this really long style sheet after a full website build, it's going to get long, and you have to sift through it in order to find all of your button information or your form information or your about page CSS. We don't wanna do that. We wanna make it as simple as possible for us in order to find what we need. So let's segment our CSS into different style sheets. Now, we could do a typical style sheet, like creating a new SCSS style sheet, and let's say we want our buttons to exist here. We could call this buttons. But the problem with this, unless you want it to do that, the problem with this is that if I enable this, when a user loads up a page, it's going to make a call for two style sheets, a button style sheet and a global style sheet. I don't want that. I just want them to only have one style sheet that is called when they land on the web page. So what I want to do is I want to create a partial that's going to hold my button information and only be used in my global style sheet. So let me show you that. We're gonna delete our style sheet here. I'm gonna create a new snippet with SCSS partial. It's gonna add an underscore. I'm gonna call this buttons. And I'm going to move all of my button information out of my global and into my buttons partial. So let's do that real quick. Grab all of my button information here, copy it, we'll delete it and we'll go to my buttons and we'll save it. Now my buttons, if I look at this, will not load, they are not showing. And that's because a partial does not get loaded on the front end for a user until I tell it to. So I'm gonna go to my global style sheet and at the very top, I'm gonna do at use single quotation underscore buttons. And we'll close that off and you'll see underscore buttons over here. I've basically called in my partial to be used in my global style sheet. So if I save this, my buttons are now there. It is pulling in my partial information into my global style sheet. So it makes it a lot easier for us to segment pieces of information instead of having to go through one giant style sheet. So I'm gonna do the same thing for all of my components on my website. I'm going to create a form component partial. So let's add a new snippet. SCSS partial, we'll call this forms, we'll click save, go back to my global and we'll pull anything that's related to my form. So I'm gonna grab my mix in, I'm gonna grab my forms and we will remove them from my global style sheet. Click save and put them into my form partial. Now I'm gonna get an error, that's okay. I will worry about that later, I'll explain it. But I need to call into my global the form style, the form partial. So let's do at forms or at use quotation underscore forms. So now I'm pulling in my form styles into my global from my form partial. So I wanna do, if I look at my global, I have one more, I have a nav. Uh, this is going to be my header CSS. So if I look right here, this is my header CSS. Well, let's put the header in its own snippet. Let's put it in its own partial. So I'm gonna create a new partial header. We'll save this. We'll grab anything in my global style sheet that's related to my header. And we'll save. Go to my header paste. I'm gonna get an error. I'll talk about it in a second. And we will reference our header partial. We'll save. And so now everything should be working. So now I've segmented everything into their own pieces. So if I wanna edit buttons, I just go to my buttons and here's my button CSS. If I want my header, I go to my header and here's all my header CSS. And instead of having to scroll through my whole global so much easier. So let's talk about really quickly the errors that I was receiving. So I'm gonna click save. And if I look at the bottom here, 
it's telling me failed to at extend dot button action. So I'm seeing at extend dot button action. So what is this doing? This is pulling in the styling of my dot button action. But in order for SAS to understand the dot button action, it has to know that the dot button action exists within the style sheet. And this style only exists within this partial dot, the underscore buttons. So it's throwing me an error because I'm not pulling in the button style sheet here. I'm not going at use underscore buttons, but that's okay. I don't have to do that because on my global style sheet, I am calling all of them together. So when my global style sheet outputs on the front end, it is going to have all the information it needs. This header will have the information it needs with the button CSS. This form, which if I save this, we'll see fail to extend dot button action, the same thing. It's trying to use some button CSS that it, it doesn't know it exists, but the global does. The global has the buttons, it has the header, it has everything. So I don't have to worry about those errors. We can ignore them. Now let's further organize all of our information. And this is how I typically organize any of my builds. I'm gonna create a folder. This is gonna be called global. And this is gonna be for anything, any components, any style sheet that is global for my whole website. So I know I'm using forms. I'm, I'm using my buttons, header, and my global style sheet are all gonna be in a global folder. Well, now I wanna create another folder for any page level CSS. So I will do page CSS. So I have another folder here and I want to create an about page CSS. So anything for my about page, I want to exist here. So I'm going to create another partial and I'm going to call this about page. We'll save and move this to my page CSS folder and we'll go to our global. I want to reference my about page, which I've already done here. I have used at use my about page partial. So now any changes I make in my about page CSS, it's going to output into my global style sheet. And I can do this for any pages. Maybe I have homepage specific CSS, so I can do a partial for homepage. I could put it in my page CSS and add this to my global as well. So I can copy this, we'll do my homepage. And so now I have everything segmented easily for myself to easily find the CSS that I'm looking for in the future if I was to put it, if I was to put any information in here. Now, one note, you could do separate style. Now, one note, you could do separate style sheets for your pages. So I could do a SCSS style sheet for my homepage. I'll click save. So now we have a style sheet, not a partial. We have a style sheet. And if I was to do it this way, if I ever wanted to use the buttons on my homepage, the button styling or the form styling, I would have to, um, let's say I had like a section that I wanted to do in order to use the button styling, I would have to pull in the at use underscore buttons in order to use the button styling. Or if I wanted to do the form styling, I'd have to do the at use form styling forms. So that's just one thing to know. If you're separating things into different sheets, style sheets themselves, you'd have to pull in those partials. But for me, it's much easier if I just do one global style sheet and keep everything in partials. So again, the way I organize, I keep all of my global CSS into a global fo folder. So all my elements, my global elements and my global style sheet and then I do page level CSS into other partials that I keep in a page CSS folder just to make my life much easier eight months down the line. And that's partials. It's creating a style sheet that doesn't load until you tell it to load. So just creating compartments for all of your CSS. And I know for some people that are watching this four part series, SAS might feel like it's too much work in order to implement, but I promise you implementing SAS into your projects will make your life 10 times easier and make everything more streamlined for yourself. So don't push it away. Try implementing SAS into your projects and you're going to see some amazing benefits from it. If you found this helpful in any way, please give it a like. If you don't like the content, dislike it. It helps me understand what I'm doing and how to do it better. And if you want to see future episodes, please make sure to subscribe. 
and I will see you guys in the next video.